espacio de videntes a otro programa de esperanza y su éxito. successful in whatever your plans are as individuals. And when we see here the CAP, what does the C stand for? Communicate. Communicate. Okay? The A stands for? Advocate. Advocate. And the P stands for? Participate. Participate. So communicate, advocate, and participate. Three steps that you can take to try to be successful. And notice it's about your success. It's not about somebody else's success. We want to help you focus on your individual growth because many times we want to help somebody else to succeed. But we can't help someone else to succeed if we're not taking care of ourselves first. And it's not being selfish, it's about saying, okay, I have to be good with me first before I can be good for someone else. And if you can get these steps down for yourselves, then maybe you can uh, recommend them talking with someone, right? Having a conversation. Is that easy to do all the time? Is it always easy to communicate and talk with people? No. What are some of the things that get in the way of communicating with someone sometimes? If someone's very shy. Okay, personality, right? Personality can be... A positive or a negative, it's just something to work with, right? What else? 
maybe someone comes off like they come off as really loud and they like, kind of. You feel a little bit intimidated? Yeah. Right? So again, it goes back to personality. It can be real positive, it can also be a challenge, right? What else could be challenging about communicating with somebody? Availability. You know, people's schedules are really tight. People are very busy. So communicating isn't always as easy as you want it to be, right? Um, and, and we need to make sure that when we communicate, it's appropriate. You know, if you're trying to communicate with a teacher, you want to talk to them in a way that's maybe a little bit different than if you want to communicate with your peer. Is that right? How many of you have teachers that you're, you're, you feel like you have a good relationship with and you're close to? Okay. But is there still like a different level of respect from them than like your best friend? Yeah? So you have different boundaries. So you have to remember that when you communicate with people. Remember those boundaries and respect those boundaries. It doesn't mean you don't have the relationship you think you have. It just means you have a solid understanding of that relationship. Okay? Great. All right. What does advocate mean? Who can, who can explain that word to us? Advocate. To speak for someone. Excellent. To speak for someone or for who? Yourself. Or yourself. The... Okay. Okay, so when we talk about green focused groups, right? Groups that want to focus on making positive changes in the environment, they speak up on behalf of the general population for the environment and defending what we need to do to make the environment better and how we can improve situations in the environment. So that's someone that could advocate. That's an example of advocating, right? But you also said advocating for ourselves. What could that look like? What could that look like if we need to advocate for ourselves? Like, um, say, like, if, like, somebody is talking about, I don't know, maybe, like, like politics or something like that, okay. and you have a different belief than what they do. Okay. They speak up. Does it always have to be confrontational in no. a negative way? No. No. It can always be, like, it could be, like, somebody says something, and you're like, oh, yeah, and you can say something, like, Right, talking about what your personal needs are, what your personal expectations are. If we don't share those thoughts, if we don't share those concerns, we're not going to know about that, right? So advocating is a really important step in being successful because we need to let people know where we're at and what, what, our, what our concerns are. What about in the classroom? What about when you have a tough time in algebra? Who can you advocate to? The teacher. What can you say to the teacher? Just be like, I'm having a really hard time. Can you spend some time after school with me? Excellent. Can you spend some time after school with me? Is it possible that you could show me where I'm making these mistakes? Because I'm studying at night, and I'm getting my homework done, and then I sit down to take these tests, and I don't know where I'm making those mistakes. I need you to help me understand my mistakes better. Right? And sometimes people are afraid to do that because it, it can be uncomfortable, because it means you have to recognize in yourself that something's not connecting the right way for you. But that's okay because you're taking the next step and being really positive on your own responsibilities and doing something about it. We can all sit back and do nothing, or we can take the steps to be, to be willing to move forward. Okay? So what's the next one? Participate. Participate. What does that mean? To be part of something, to join something. He's, in, he's impressing a room full of ladies today. He's got some <laughs> really, good, really good feedback. And like I said before, you might end up with a prom date after this conversation. <laughs> so that's good. But when we talk about our own success, when we talk about our own ability to move forward, we need to remember these three key pieces, communicating, advocating, and participating. Because right now you're in a situation, you're all in high school, where you have a lot of support around this. You have plenty of people around you to help you build these skills. Your teachers, your guidance counselors, your school adjustment counselors, you have different resource officers in the building, uh, your administrators, right? So there are lots of people to go to if you want to build these skills. What happens when you get to the college level? There are, there are, there are people there. It's not like you go to college and everything just disappears, right? Maybe it's harder to get to because they Harder to get to in what way? You're on the right track. Harder to get to in what way? Yeah. Very available, but what does it require? Maybe like a meeting or something. It, and who's going to set it up? You. You. If you're having questions about things in a class with your college professor, say you're having a tough time in class and, and you're getting a test back, and you know sometimes you go to college and the semester's broken down to three test grades. That's it. Your whole grade is based on a, a, an exam, a second exam, and a final exam, and that's it. So you get that first exam back and it's not where you need it to be, well, what are you going to do about it? Go home and talk to your roommates? That might be helpful, but who else should you bring into the conversation? The professor. Communicate with that individual. Let them know that you have concerns. Advocating. Advocating for whatever those needs are. If you're in a situation where maybe you have three roommates in, in, in your dorm that you're sharing your room with and you're having an issue with one of them, it doesn't mean you have to have it out as a, as a room 
and, and have a real problem, but talk to someone that's on the outside that can help you and know what those resources are. The colleges have resident assistants, RAs they're called, to help resolve roommate conflicts and make sure everybody can manage in a positive way. Know about your resources and, and go after those resources so that you can have the support you need. All right? And then the participation piece, getting involved so that you're part of what's going on around you as opposed to just being in the, set, the setting that things are going on. Okay? It's going to have a much more meaningful experience for you if you can connect to what's going on. All right? So communicate, advocate, participate. They're going to help you. These skills are going to help you really find a sense of your own control and what's going on and how you can really manage and, like I said, control the issues that you're facing. And, and they don't have, issues don't always have to be problems that are negative. It could just be unknowns. It could be uncertainties. You have to check in on something. You have to, you have to figure out what the answer to something is. It doesn't mean you're having a problem and you're not succeeding, but you need to know what your steps are that you can take. So I just want to give you a quick blurb. We want to give you a quick blurb about our transition from high school to everything after. So you want to start? So I went to high school at University Park Campus. And um, for those of you who know, when you go to University Park Campus school, you get a scholarship to go to Clark tuition free. And so Clark was my last choice. I didn't want to go. I wanted to get out of Worcester. I ended up going to Clark because all the other options were either too much money or too far away. So my transition story is more about how I made it work. So I didn't want to go to Clark. So from the beginning, I kind of had a negative attitude about it. But what I did to solve that was I joined a lot of, um, I did a pre-orientation program, which helped because even though Growing up around Clark, I knew the campus. I know like a lot of people that work there. It's not the same, and it helped establish a sense of community before the rest of the first years got there. So that was nice. I already had like a support system, and then another way I did, um, I made it work was by living on campus. I know that might seem a little bit ridiculous considering I'm, I'm from Maine South, but it helped because it helped me separate university from my prior life and I really made it a point to stay on campus and make myself a community there. I also got involved, I became an RA which really helped um, give me more responsibilities on campus and then I studied away, um, I went to DC. So these are ways that you can make it work when you end up going to a school that necessarily wasn't your first choice or isn't your hometown. That's how I made it work and now that I've graduated and everything's said and done, I'm really happy I went there. Um, I think it was one of my best decisions. And to North High. And even though, even though I knew I wanted to go to college, and even though I knew I was going to go to college, I didn't really take things too seriously. So then, like, it was graduation time, and then I got pulled in the guidance counselor's office, and they were like, Ellie, what are you going to do? And I was like, go to college? They're like, where are you going to go? And I was like, oh, man. So then I ended up going to Quinn State right after. So, you know, it, that, that, that was one of those moments where it's like, are you going to give up or are you going to keep going? So I went to Quincy, I went there for two years, I got two associates, and then I transferred to here, Worcester State. And this wasn't where I wanted to go, but I stayed here, and then I found an opportunity to do a transfer decision day, which is where you go to a school, you meet with the admissions counselor, and they tell you right on the spot if you get it, at Northeastern University, which is where I wanted to go. And I went. I, luckily, I got in, and I'm still pursuing my degree there. Now, my the now, what I want to tell you about that story is that I could have easily just been like, screw this. This is not, you know, I graduated high school. I didn't get to go where I wanted to go. I give up. And then at the same time, if I had used the cap approach earlier, even in high school would have been perfect. But even right after high school, a lot of time that was spent trying to go where I needed to go and do what I needed to do could have been solved. But yet, you're going to face that in life. You're going to face situations where things aren't going to go, aren't going to fly the way you want it to. You can do everything that you think you needed to do, and it's still not going to work out. But that's where you have to learn to pick yourself up. Go, it's all right. I know what my goals are, and I'm going to figure out a way to do it. It's like Steve said. You know, you might not be ready to do it at that moment, but if you follow Cat, you will get yourself. Our friend Alex had some situations, situations throughout the stages in Alex's life, where there were decisions that Alex had to make. And those decisions can influence that moment, that stage of their life. It could also influence the stages after their life. But I'm not going to sit here and talk to you about how Alex's decisions are going to go and how Alex's decisions affected Alex. So what I would like to do is I'd like to break you guys up into four groups. 
So let's do this. We have, my number account went off because new yeah, students came in. Yeah, we're gonna do like one, two, three, four. Okay, so. Yeah. So this I'm is going the down. stage of Alex's life you guys are gonna talk about. It. And you guys have a stage yet? No. So this is the stage of Alex's life that you guys are gonna look at. So in your in your groups, find someone who's gonna lead it. So in each group, one person is gonna be the leader, which is gonna lead the conversation. The next person is going to be the scribe, so take notes, I got pens for you, from whatever you guys are talking about. And then the third person is a speaker, right? And the third person is going to be a speaker, who's going to speak about the situation. And present it to the rest of the group. Yeah. So who's the scribe here? And the goal is to have you um, think about the like cat model, okay? And think about steps that Alex can take in communicating, advocating, and participating to resolve the issue. Does that make sense? Who's a writer for the guy? So let's start off, let's see, with stage one, where are we at? Stage one, how are you? What age range is uh, stage one for Alex? 13 to 16. 13 to 16, so what school, like what school and what grades are we talking about then? So it's like that whole transition period from like leaving like elementary, middle school and going into high school, into adolescence, early adulthood. Okay, what's the situation you guys got? Well, I'm trying to offer to give Alex a copy of the test and to cheat, to cheat from while another offers to study with Alex. What, 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 kind of, what, what do you think would happen if Alex decided, I don't want to study, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy this test? Get caught. You get caught? What if, what if Alex doesn't get caught? Well, maybe he has to show his work and tell them about what he is and he's going to be cheating. Okay, good. That's good. In this situation, the girls decided that he was going to take the high road, right, and do the right thing by studying for the test, communicating with the teacher, talking to them, advocating and saying, okay, these are my areas of challenge with this test. Can you help me understand how I can better prepare? And then studying with the friend. Who else could he have communicated with? He could have communicated with the person who's offering him the test. And instead of telling, telling them it's like not really, he can tell them it's not really a good idea, but then also invite that person to the study group too. That's a that would be a that's like a huge step, right? For someone to say, you know what, I'm not necessarily gonna throw you under the table and say to the teacher. So you know, advocating is not and communicating is not always about feeling like you have to do something negative to make a positive, but in a real positive way, saying, you know what, why don't you leave that answer sheet over there? Why don't you come study with me and so-and-so so that we can all learn this together? And as a group, we can really succeed, and we can help each other out in, in making that a good test for all of us, but doing it in a different way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because you never know you never know what the challenge that other person was facing and feeling like their only answer was to take the answer sheet. Maybe there was something else going on for them that was really putting them in a tough spot, and, and their judgment was kind of not great at the moment. So helping them figure out a different way to make a positive change without feeling so bad about the original decision they made. Good work. Okay, so a lot, I think a lot of you are in that stage yeah. two right now. Okay, what's the situation? A friend with very unhealthy habits approaches Alice for help. What should Alice do? Okay. And then for communicate, we were saying that you know he should give his own advice to the friend. You know what he thinks that he should do. 
And then you should also tell the friend, you know, like to go to um to go to maybe like a guidance counselor, somebody who is what he respects as an authority figure, and probably ask them for help as well. And then for advocate, we probably we said we step up and talk, like uh, Alex should talk to an adult that he trusts and ask them about the scenario and ask him what he thinks that he should do. And then for participate, you know, said help Alex be a better person. So like you know, find groups that'll help him. And if he you know he needs, if he's like, can you come with me? Say yes. If he needs a kid as support, you know that Alex should be there for him. I think for me, what I think is really important, and, and you, you mentioned it, is uh, the advocating piece in this situation. Yeah. At, at 16 to 18 years old, are any of you experts on unhealthy decisions and, and really teaching and training somebody to rethink and, and re-decide what they're going to take part in? No. no. So a friend that comes to you and talks about that with you isn't thinking that, well, maybe they do think you're going to have the answers, but are you wrong to reach out to somebody else and say, I need to help my friend with this? How do I get some support. Mm -hmm. So that advocacy is going to help you feel more confident in helping your friend as well. Who's got stage two in Alex's life? Yeah. Now what age range are we talking here? This is like 16 to 18. 16 to 18. And what grades, what part of their life, what's going on with Alex at that That's time? Probably like, you know, like junior, senior year, probably going like into college. Nice. <laughs> I got no, that's good. It's good. It's yeah, yeah, all good. Yeah. When, like when you, when you leave, and not just, you know, just like when you leave for college, or you, or if you get accepted in the city, let's say you're from Worcester and they're like, offer you a job in Milwaukee or in Chicago, you know, it might be a great opportunity, but you're going to have these fears like, oh, my friends are good, I don't know anybody there, and oh, my family's over there, you know, but, but if you let those things just overwhelm you, you're going to go overwhelmed and you might miss an opportunity, but if you take the cap approach and you figure out a way to communicate this out with yourself, advocate to make this work for yourself and then participate in that advocation, you can be extremely successful. Um, and you know th what? Now let me ask you. This is a really important question. If Alex in stage one decided to do the opposite, Alex is like, "Hey, I need that test." Or in stage two, Alex is just like, "Oh, you know, you, what are you doing? What are you doing?" Oh, you know, maybe he decided to partake in those unhealthy skills. Stage three, Alex didn't make the move to college, or Alex didn't advocate for them for his or herself when they got there. Or in stage four, didn't take that job and then realize two years later that, damn, that was a really good job. Is it too late? No. Mm -hmm. It's not. You have to do it for yourself, though. No one's going to do it for you. That's, that's so important. If you, if you use the CAP approach, you can help yourself get to where you need to go. But it might not be the first try. It might not be the second try. And you have to understand that in life, you're going to fall. You're going to slip. There's going to be roadblocks. There's gonna, there, there might even be people who are going to try to stop you from doing what you need to do. And then they might stop you from doing what you have to do. But it's not the end. You always have to keep moving. You always have to tell yourself, all right, what do I got to do? What? And then you got to make that happen. You got to participate in your own success. And that is the biggest thing that I can tell you to get out of here, to take from here, is just don't give up. And then use this awesome cap approach, because that's, what the, the, that's the message that we're trying to send you today. Steve, any last words for us? No, I just want to say thank you guys for being so engaged in this workshop. It was a lot of fun to hear your ideas and your thoughts. And, and you know, this is, this is an evolution for you guys. You're at a, you're at a point where you're growing. We all, we all continue to grow at different stages in our lives. So you're at a point that's, that's critical and real for you right now. Um, and we hope that this, this recommendation for these, these tools is something that you can apply now and then look back on it and, and utilize in other encounters that you have moving forward. But, um, just thank you for, for being so involved with us this morning and for giving us your time.